So uh, can they just use any old 14 gauge well, needle is the question. The, the, historically they would just use a 14 gauge or a 16 gauge catheter. However, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, evidence out there showing that the, um, the traditional 1.16 um, inch uh, catheter, that's, this is your stand, this is a, a 16, um, I, I couldn't find a 14 gauge, but this is the standard length um, catheter here. And there, there's literature out there saying that we need to get at least five centimeters to actually de to, to reach the pleura and be able to uh, uh, decompress. So, so have we you have actually, have you seen patients come in that basically had their, um, they attempted to do a needle decompression, but they never, never even, the needle never even reached the many pleura. Many times, yeah, many times we'll see they may, they may have two or three catheters sitting there in their chest still, and they never actually got any um, release of air or blood or anything like yeah. that. Um, we turn around and get a chest x-ray and they still have a collapsed lung. So it's critical to get the word out there that if you're going to put a needle on somebody's chest, the needle has to be long enough to get into the into the pleura. However, um, there was a recent meta-analysis done, uh, published in pre-hospital disaster medicine in 2015, that now cites around six and a half centimeters as appropriate length wow. for um, needle decompression. So in this case here, we use a, it's a three and a quarter inch. And you have this in your airway box over there, right? We have this in our um, what we call our a pneumothorax box. Um, we have several of these, and they're actually all over our trauma bay, so um, so you can find it pretty easily. So, what's your thoughts about the flutter valves? You know, taking a glove and cutting off a, a finger of a glove and putting that on there, or but again, like three-way stopcock that we showed earlier. From the research that we've looked at, we haven't found anything that's panned out to support it. I mean, it makes sense if you were to think about the pathophysiology, but um, but the data has not supported it. All right, Dr. Cool. Uh, you know, how many years were you a paramedic? Well, so I was an EMT for approximately 10 years before med school, um, so um, I, I went to EMT school and high school at the same time. So okay, okay. All the time I was going through college and the first two years of med school. All right, all right. And then you play a role in the leadership of EMS locally and, and here in our program. So what's your thoughts about uh, uh, needle thoracostomy and putting on, um, you know, flutter valves and and uh, three-way stopcocks and, and so forth. What, what's your thoughts on that? So, so I don't believe the physics supports any need to do that whatsoever. In fact, if you look at the failure rate for needle decompression to begin with, a lot of these clot off and kink off. So they actually have a bigger problem with occluding than they do uh, you, you inspiring air through that tiny 14 gauge needle. Yeah. What is clear is that you have to use a long needle. Yeah. It needs to be a 14 gauge. The whole put a stop cock on it, put a put a flutter valve on it, put a condom on it, put a glove tip on it. Uh, I think is completely unnecessary. Okay. So when you were out there in the field, what did you do? Needled them, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other thoughts on uh, needle thoracostomy? It's not done often enough, um, particularly traumatic arrest. In my opinion, if a patient's in cardiac arrest in the pre-hospital setting, the only correctable cause that you can fix in the field is to, to decompress the tension in the thorax. So. And use a long enough needle. So would, what would you advise someone who's got uh, an asthma patient who goes into cardiac arrest? So that's a little bit more unclear. Um, if you Obviously, if you suspect the tension pneumo, then you should go ahead and do it in that situation. There are some people who recommend that on an asthma, asthmatic arrest that you do a bilateral chest tube when the, the minute they arrive as part of their CPR. I, I'll, I'll refrain from, from <laughs> joining in that recommendation. I don't think it's quite so clear there. And in terms of trying to write a protocol that's easily interpreted in the pre-hospital setting, I think that's difficult. But it, what is clear is a traumatic arrest probably should have needles in both sides of the chest. Okay, cool. Thanks so much.